Uh, can we get a zoom on this? Because I just want to show our refounding father right here. Here he is. I promise I will never tell a lie. Well, all right. I mean, not, not really. Barack Obama needs a vacation. He must be tired. He spent the last six months transforming our country, and most people won't either admit it or recognize it. He told us he would do it, and he is. But no one is paying any attention to it. Don't be in denial. Do not put your head in the sand. And if I'm wrong, I w you're more than welcome to show me where I'm missing it. I'd love to be wrong on this. Barack Obama has revealed his game plan to transform America in his deeds. The, the transformation was marketed to America as change, and boy, was America just eager for change. I never thought this day would ever happen. I won't have to worry about putting gas in my car. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage. You know, if I, if I help him, he's going to help me. Now, I remember when that first came on, and I thought to myself, boy, that woman's stupid. Is she? Or were we stupid? How's that woman feeling now as she continues to write her own checks for her own mortgage and fill up her own gas tank? I wonder if she's disappointed in Barack Obama or she just can't wait for it all to come true. More and more people are becoming disappointed because their understanding change wasn't really... He had a different definition of change. The latest poll numbers now show the number of Americans who strongly disapprove of his performance is eight points higher than those who strongly approve. Too many Americans believed that he was a moderate during the campaign. And now, all of a sudden, I don't know what happened. He's governing from the left. Hello? Barack Obama can't be blamed for this. He couldn't have been any clearer about who he was and what he planned to do. He even told us, as he was speaking to a group of community organizers and ACORN, that those community organizations would help shape his agenda. Before I even get inaugurated, during the transition, we're going to be calling all of you in to help us shape the agenda. We're going to be having meetings all across the country with community organizations so that you have input into the agenda for the next presidency of the United States of America. Oh, he's just saying that he's a politician, we all thought, I guess. He also mentioned on the campaign trail that he wanted to build an AmeriCorps-type volunteer organization that would be just as strong and well-funded as the U.S. military. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. Okay, then. This is, by the way, not the only time he discussed this. You know, being a community organizer, it's now, now the new it gig. I mean, that's your work for the government? Are you kidding me? Think of the benefits. And if you work for the government for 10 years, your student loan is going to be paid for by, you know, the little people. But only if the loan is federalized. Hmm, really? If that sounds a little imperial to you, don't worry. At least your kids will still have a choice. Or will they? Citizenship is not an entitlement program. It comes with responsibilities. Everybody somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25 will serve three months of basic training and understanding in a kind of civil defense. That universal sense of service, somewhere between the ages of 18 and 25, will give Americans, once again, a sense of what they are to be American and their contribution to a country and a common experience. And you look at World War II, well, that was a draft, but this is not a draft, it's a universal service. It is not an accident that we started our big march towards civil rights and expanding post-World War II because the country came through an experience together. Okay, that is, that is, that is key. That is key. The country went through something together and then civil rights and everything changed. Wait, give me, give me at the bottom of the hour, wait until you see what we have coming up tonight. Now remember, Back to this universal service. This isn't a draft. It's it's, it's not compulsory. It, it's it's a, just required. It's not socialism. It's social justice. Does the book 1984 come to mind to anybody? Let's look at Obama's taxation policies. They haven't been exactly timid either. But again, at least he told us what he really thought. He warned us. Your success. I just want to make sure that everybody who is behind you, that they've got a chance at success too. I think when you spread the wealth around, it's good for it. 
Okay. Oh, remember? Oh, that's, he's not a Marxist. No, that's crazy talk. That's just a good rule of thumb, sort of a social justice safety tip. It's not like he learned that ideology very early on from his mentor, Frank Marshall Davis, an avowed communist. You know, the kind of people he's now appointing as czars. He didn't learn all of this from his favorite professors in college, Marxist, not called that by me, but the people he spoke about in his book, Dreams of My Father. I chose my friends carefully, the more politically active black students, the foreign students, the Chicanos, the Marxist professors and structural feminists and punk rock performance poets. Oh, Chief. You can't hold him to that. He was, uh, he was, he was, he was four at the time. He can't hold it, really. How about we hold him to something he said in an Illinois public radio station in 2001 when he was a state legislator in Illinois? The Supreme Court never ventured into the issues of redistribution of wealth uh, and sort of more basic issues of political and, and, and uh, economic justice in the society. And uh, to that extent, as radical as I think people tried to characterize the Warren Court, uh, it wasn't that radical. It, it didn't break free from the essential constraints that were placed uh, uh, by the Founding Fathers in the Constitution, at least as it's been interpreted, and Warren Court interpreted it in the same way, that, that generally the Constitution is a charter of negative liberties, says what the states can't do to you, says what the federal government can't do to you, but it doesn't say what the federal government or the state government must do on your behalf. Oh, my gosh. I mean, geez, look at that. Look at that. Listen to this, this part. She said uh, that uh, here that it haven't shifted. Uh, the tragedy of the civil rights movement was because the civil rights movement became too court-focused. Listen to this. Negative liberties. You know what this is? We talked about it last week. We talked about negative liberties and a new Bill of Rights. FDR was the one who brought it up. Oh, wait a minute. Another one of his czars was talking about it as well. Gee, filling up your car and having somebody else pay for your house. Who's the stupid one now? Us or the woman at the beginning of the monologue? What a powerful endorsement of the most perfect political document in the history of the world from our new president. Unfortunately, it also didn't bring about that change that he was talking about. And when I say that change, I mean, you know, the kind of change that Obama and Karl Marx wanted so badly. And we'll also need to do lots of redistributing to the, the poor if Obama gets his way on energy policy. Under my plan uh, of a cap-and-trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket. Even you know, regardless of what I say about whether coal is good or bad, because I'm capping greenhouse gases, coal power plants, you know, natural gas, you name it, whatever the plants were, whatever the industry was, they would have to uh, retrofit their operations. That will cost money. They will pass that money on to consumers. How can we be in denial still? Thankfully, those high prices will help break us of our evil capitalist habits. Quote, we can't drive our SUVs, you know, and eat as much as we want and keep our homes on, you know, 72 degrees all the time, whether we're living in the desert or living in the tundra, and then just expect every other country's going to say, okay. Let me tell you something. My studio here is set at 65 degrees right now. If I could get it to 40, I would. And you know what? I don't really care if it hurts the feelings of some Frenchy Frenchman. Boo-hoo, cry me a river. I'm going to go on living my life the way I choose to live it. And if that includes 18 hours of TV and Doritos, that's my choice, baby. Or is it? Barack Obama will require you to work. Barack will never allow you to go back to your lives as usual. Uninvolved, uninformed. She goes on to say, he will force you, force you to be engaged. Well, we were promised this over and over again, over and over. The fundamental transformation of America was coming, named change. We're five days away from fundamentally transforming the United States of America. This man, we have been screaming for a man who would tell us the truth. And then when somebody tells us exactly what he believes in plain English, we refuse to listen to him. Nobody took this man at his word. The question is, when will you begin? How much more evidence do you need before you wake up and go, wait a minute, wait a minute, hang on, what's he doing?